Winter is here. There's no denying it. And I thought to myself, I could do one of two things. I could sit here and complain about it, or I could do something about it. Work before play, as my grandfather used to say. Which works for me because the time I spent managing the snow and the cold has actually given me a great video idea. Funny how that works. What's up guys, my name is Mark, and today I want to share with you some tips and tricks on shooting photos and video out in the cold. I live in Canada and at least four months of the year we're kind of covered in this blanket of snow. so. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not gonna stay inside during this entire time and not take the opportunity to go out and shoot. You just have to be prepared. So a number of years ago, I landed a dream job, shooting a cross Canada snowboard tour for an event company. It was the best gig at the time because it combined my love of filmmaking with snowboarding and traveling. Now, because I was outside for six to eight hours a day, I learned quite a lot at effectively shooting outside in the cold. So let's get into it in no particular order. Number one, obviously, is dressing warm. You're not going to be outside long enough to get the shot or get the footage required if you yourself are cold. So it's very important to dress according to the weather. Luckily, modern day winter gear isn't as bulky as it used to be. What is it? The tactical vest may be a bit much, but the lip balm is not. One of the most important things are going to be your gloves, because that's where all of your photography work is going to be coming through. So I like these particular ones. They're warm and they have contact points so that I can actually use my touchscreen features on my phone or on my camera. So these are my favorite. I've got a secondary pair to go on top of these when I'm actually hiking and not shooting, but when I'm actually doing my shooting, it's just these. Now the cold will suck your batteries dry a lot faster than in more moderate temperatures. So bring all the batteries you possibly can. Every bit counts. The next important thing to remember is the batteries you're not using, keep them warm. I personally like to keep these on me, not inside a pocket like this that has direct access to the cold, but maybe on a layer just inside my jacket and inside pocket, something that's close to my body but not right against my core. Because depending on how much activity you're doing, if you're doing a lot of hiking, you don't want the moisture to touch the batteries. Because the second you pull them out, put them in your cold camera, it's gonna cause condensation issues. Keep them as warm as you can without keeping them directly on your body. Now condensation is probably one of the worst enemies for your camera gear which is basically the moisture that's created when you go from a cold environment to a warm environment without any kind of like time in between. So one thing to remember, if you're outside for a long time shooting with your camera and you want to go inside the chalet and warm up, it's not a good idea to move directly from the outside cold into the chalet because condensation will form on your gear, which is why I like to bring these plastic Ziploc bags and packets of these celiac gel packs, which are found in like electronics boxes and everything. Keep these, they, these are really handy for photographers. When I'm done shooting, I pack my camera and my lens into these Ziploc bags, drop in these celiac packs, and that should take care of the moisture, and that should take care of the moisture associated with condensation. Ziploc baggies, who knew? Now, if you are serious about shooting outside in the winter months, I would definitely recommend bringing a padded camera bag. And if you're going to be shooting for extended periods of time, I would recommend going a step further and buying a Porter Brace or some other brand, something that goes directly onto your camera as you're shooting. This I bought a number of years ago. It's a Porter Brace winter camera bag stick the camera inside. It's got holes and stuff for you to put your hands in, keep the camera in. It is a little awkward to use, but nothing a little practice doesn't overcome. 
and it just keeps you more comfortable so you can stay outside shooting longer. There's a number of different brands besides Porter Brace and I would seriously recommend it. They're not very expensive for the value they bring and I mean I wouldn't shoot extensively outside without one of these. Now the final thing I'm going to kind of talk about today are, they're my personal favorite. These have saved my butt a number of times and they kind of tie everything together. And that's these little warm pockets. I love these things, they are amazing. They're inexpensive to buy, especially in bulk. The best thing about these is that they can go in your camera bag, keep your camera gear warm, they can go inside your gloves, I'm wearing some right now there. Um, they can go inside your boots. You can put them inside your inner pockets to keep you warm. There's also a space inside my Porta Brace bag where you can put these little packets, keep everything warm inside. And honestly, these, without these, I don't know if I would have been able to do those, those six to eight hour days in Quebec in in the Rockies when it was like minus 28 with wind chill and I'm still required to get the shot. So those hand warmers are my absolute favorite. Definitely consider those and they tie kind of everything together. Now, I love shooting outside in the winter. I know it is a bit of a pain in the butt but the opportunities presented for videographers and photographers and the activities that you can capture are totally worth it in my opinion. You just have to know some precautions to take in order to take care of yourself as well as your gear. Well, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'd love to hear any tips and tricks down below in the comments if you guys have any in terms of shooting outside in the cold. I didn't cover everything today. I just covered the, the top things that work well for me. If you are serious about shooting outside in the winter months for extended periods of time, I would definitely do some additional reading on it just to protect your gear and to protect yourself. If you did like this video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Good thing is it's light and fluffy, so it's really not that big a deal to shovel. I will say the best thing about winter and doing kind of manual labor in the winter is free refrigeration. Mm. Carbonated water, so good. <laughs>